Hi guys, it's Greg from Maskell's Customs and Classics. I'm here to show you a bit about the H that we've just finished the build on. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful car, a bit of a story behind it. Uh, I got a phone call one day from a young guy, bought the car for his dad and wanted to know if we could do a paint job for him. I said, look, if it's only a paint job, not a problem. Why is that? He said that he'd given it to his dad, his dad took it for a drive, come back and said, what am I going to do with this piece of junk? Let's see if we can work it out, get a paint job for it. So I said, yeah, no worries. Bring it to me as a disassembled car. The next day he shows up with a completed car, still running. So he drove it off the trailer. In the time frame from the first conversation to when they arrived with Heath and Jack, the dad, they decided that they wanted a V8, six-speed manual, some fat tyres. So... I kind of re agreed to doing this, and that's where the car started to evolve. Um, a bit of a story behind the, the name No Say is Heath and I, as we built the car, we would discuss things and ask Jack a few, few times. Um, the input that Jack had was the V8 uh, six-speed manual. Also, we wanted to pay a bit of homage to Jack's Kenworth. Uh, it was a gunmetal grey colour with a burgundy trim, so this is the colour scheme for the H. So as we've gone on and we've deciding things and working out how we we're going to do it, and we would include Jack in the, these conversations, and then one day I said to Jack um, about the seats. He wanted to put different seats in it. I wanted to keep the original seats, so I thought Jack was going to be on my side. I said to Jack, what do you think? Do you want to keep the factory seats? And he said, I get no say in it, so it doesn't matter. So from that point on, the car's been known as no say. Um, so it's Victorian registration now is No Say. So he's come up with all that and that's where the name No Say has come from and the, the colour scheme. So it's a fairly well customised car, um, but it's still a classic EH. We didn't want to take it too far from, from the factory car, you know, so you still recognise it, but just class it up, maybe modernise it a little bit. So it's got a lot of things on it that are just little hidden tricks that we've done, some are major that most people would see, uh, but We'll go through this car and we'll explain what we've done on the car. Um, as you can see, a burgundy trim, leather, suede, same as the boot area. They've done to match each other. Now there's a lot of little niceties in this car. Some things people will obviously see, like the, the badge on the glove box. That's the same style of badge as the original Special, but again, the owner has the machine and they drew the, the badge up, we polished it and put it on the on the glove box area and that's come up a treat. Uh, these are all made out of fiberglass and wrapped now. Um, one of the cool things about this interior that most people don't notice is we had Classic Instruments remake the EH gauge cluster. So now it's 200 kilometer an hour speedo, the original Holden font. So when you actually look at this gauge cluster, it's like an EH Holden. The lenses are all EH, like everything's EH. The fascia is a billet aluminium, and then again we've we've etched in the, the satin into all these pieces. Another cool part of the car is all of the knobs were made to look like an EH knob. That's actually the ignition key. So we glued a, a, a spare knob onto that. The gear shift knob is all EH style, so they're different sizes, but it all just matches as an EH. It's got air conditioning. Um, we had the console 3D scanned and then uh, the young guys printed that for us. We've got the Commodore electric um, brake switches in here. So that's, that's another thing that we've just added to complement it, but a bit more modern. The seats are an aftermarket seat and Mikey's made the rear seat from nothing. Trimmed them all so they all match. They're still a similar pattern and they have a backrest sort of or a headrest like the EH did, uh, if you look up the EHs. Door trims are very simple. Some people say, oh, where's the door handles? Well, back in 64, the door handles were an option. So we've made the window crank and the door lever, and it's got a nice little pattern in the, in the aluminium. If you look at the pedals, it's in all of those as well, because Heath's made all those for us as at the same time. Um, so the interior, although I don't fit too well, but I'm six foot three, 
it's very comfortable. Some people say, oh, it doesn't look very comfortable. It's very comfortable. It works well. Um, and we've just sort of kept a few things because eventually they're going to drive this car. So it's got a stereo in it, which we put back in the early days. It's got air conditioning in it. Um, we could have hidden those things, but we wanted to make it so as it was a bit easier to get to. So that's the interior, guys. So what we're going to show you here is some of the stuff that we've done on the EH. Some of the things you'll, you'll notice, some of the things that you won't notice. Um, we'll start at the front of the car, we'll work our way to the back of the car and just explain little tricks that we've done that neaten it up so when you're looking at this car you'll understand. So the bumper bars for one front and rear on an EH, they're a three piece item and they, the front is a different end to the rear. They're, they're strange, so what we've done is used the same both ends and made them a whole one piece and then we put a little lip a nice little pretty lip on the top of the bar just to give it a little something you know tuck it in nice and it's just made the front of the car and the rear of the car and a lot nicer and tighter a couple other things that we've done um, as you can see it's pretty much a standard EH but we've modified this front panel that's a whole one piece item now um, we've changed it the way it bolts in so the bolts are internal uh, it's still technically like an EH how it bolts together, but we've changed a few of these things just to make it tidy. Got rid of the, the panel that goes there for the, the latch. And that's all underneath now, so it's still solid, but it's all, all hidden. The, the bonnet is all smoothed out. It's steel. Some people think this is fiberglass, but it's a steel bonnet. All the return edges on the every panel is being removed, so there's no return edges. So it smooths up the, the bonnet and the boot's done the same way. Um, a couple of things that we've done here, we've raised all of the bolts, so any exposed bolt that you can see on the car, it has a raised area around it, a bit like on the, the throttle cable and things like that. They're machined into some pieces and they're pressed into some, some of the panels and then we put a bit of rod on the end here to, to again tidy it up. One of the major things on the engine bay that some people don't notice is obviously we've modified the engine bay, but what we've done is this panel here is a is that guard. So we've used the right hand inner skirt is our left hand front guard and vice versa. So as you'll see, we still have the peak of the, the guard, the peaks and the headlight surrounds, they're all still on there. And we made that so that it would give us plenty of tire clearance and look good, and that's still an EH thing. Um, one of the obvious things is the, the LS. So we put a Sean's Custom Alloy intake with the trumpets on it. And the little things that we've done here, all of the etching is on every polished piece of aluminium on the car. So wherever you see aluminium, you'll see this etching on it. You know, it's on the faces of them, on, sometimes on the top lips, things like that. But it just gives us a bit of texture for the rest of the car. As you can see, we've got a satin finished paint in the engine bay and a gloss on the exterior and the running gear and suspension are all a little bit darker than their exterior colour. So all this tidies it all up. Bonnet hinges, we've custom made these. We're very lucky in one way that the owner of the EH, uh, one of his businesses he owns is an engineering workshop and they've got a water jet cutter and a CNC uh, mill and lathe. So they've been able to make all these out of stainless steel for us, the hinges, the knobs in the dash, all sorts of little things that are all made from these guys there. They're very talented guys, so we, we tapped into that little bit of a talent there. So it allowed us to change a lot of this engine bay. All right, so now we've got the side of the car. We'll give you a little bit of a description of what we've got here. Um, the colour actually is an Aston Martin DB10 colour. Took a little bit of work to get this colour because they don't hand that over too easy. So it's a, it's a really fine metallic. Uh, Gives you a lot of different shades, you know, in different lights, it's going to go light silver and dark silver. So some of the photos you might look at and go, well, that's a bit of a different colour there and there. That's because it, it reflects the light really, really well. But it's a beautiful colour, it really is. A few things that we've done on the side of the car. Uh, this body line that's through here, that actually, we had to weld that piece up because it's a bit higher there on both sides. So we make that nice and straight through there. The EH doesn't have this little curve there. It's, it's a fairly big hole. So we just put a nice little curve into there and recessed it in and it just tidies it up. And one of the things that Heath wanted to do was he wanted the square doors. The EH has a very rounded center of the door. 
So to do that, we've had to modify the B pillar, um, but we want to make it look like it was a factory finish, not not a aftermarket thing, which is a bit gaudy. So it's smoothed out. Um, I'm very lucky. I've got a really talented bunch of guys that work for me, and and Youngie Winnie's done that. He's done a beautiful job of it, and it's it's really hard to detect where it is. Um, so so. The basics of the, the car is all the gaps are neat and even and tidy, all the alignment. And this is what we do on these cars these days, try and make them all, all nice. Um, the, the, the modifications on the sides are very minimal because we wanted to keep it an EH. We don't have a fuel cap on the side, we put that into the tail light. And we haven't really modified any of the wheel arches or anything than like that. We just massage the, the wheel arches just a little bit to help us with some clearance but the general sides top and, and front and rear of the car are still classic EH because we want it to stay as a classic EH. Um, so we can move to the rear now. So now we're at the rear of the car there's a few obvious changes but there's a couple of subtle ones as well. Not a lot of modifications on the rear. One of the ones is there's no fuel cap so what we've done is we've made the tail light pivot on a hinge and a fuel cap is in there and so is the boot release. So we just shut that like that. The rear bumper bar, as you can see, is modified the same as the front. It's not a three piece anymore. It's got the little lip on the top. We've got rid of all the badges and the boot lock. They're all gone. Side boot lots of, locks have gone as well. And then Mike has trimmed it out. So inside here we have the brake boosters, the electric handbrake, the battery, the water squirters, the amp, all that sort of stuff's all hidden in behind here, fuel pumps and fuel tank. So Mike has trimmed this out, done a beautiful job. He's used a couple of different leathers and a bit of carpet here. There's a suede leather in the carpet and a bit of aluminium just to sort of match it in with the interior of the car. One of my guys, Shano, he asked if we could paint the boot lid burgundy. I said, yeah, let's go for it and see what it looks like. Most people don't do that, and I, but I think on this car it really works. It's, it's a gorgeous thing. But again, we've smoothed out some of the boot lid, got rid of the, the lips off the edges all the way around. But yeah, that's kind of the extent of modifications on the rear. It's a very tidy rear end, but it's still a classic, beautiful looking car. So now we're going to just tell you a little bit about the underneath of the car. As you'll see, it's all satin finished paint, but we've done a flat floor pan, um, hidden a lot of stuff, all the wiring, brake lines are all hidden. The fuel lines you'll see, they're, they're made out of stainless steel so we've put them under there. The exhaust is all powder coated in a dark satin grey to complement the car. Um, didn't want to really polish anything underneath, didn't want to make it too much of a highlight. So we just used gloss paint on the suspension and components. It's got a, the normal 9 inch, we've made the 4 bar rear, tubbed it. It's got a full chassis under the car. Uh, that links from the very front of the bumper bar to the rear bumper bar, so it's a one-piece chassis now. Um, it's it's tidy under there, but still usable. Uh, usable as in, you're probably not going to drive to Brisbane in this car, but you're actually going to be able to drive it around town and have a bit of fun. The satin, uh, PPG satin, is a really tough uh, finish, so it'll stand up to some stones. If you drive it down a dirt road, it's probably going to damage it, but most bitumen roads will be fine. Um, the underneath of the car, we've actually probably had two or three goes at getting right because the car was originally built to be a drivable, fun car, and then we changed it a little bit, and then we changed it further, and we've ended up with this car that we've got now. Um, but it's it's still really sort of simple. When you look under the car, you go, well, there's not a lot there, so how does it actually function? But trust me, everything is there, and everything functions. The handbrake works. The fuel, everything. It runs, it stops, it turns. So underneath the car is very simple, but there's probably more work under the car than anywhere else on the car. So that's kind of the, the EH for you guys. So now we'll just run you through some of the, the things that take a bit of work to make an EH at this level. Uh, when we first got the car, it was all good. Uh, it's just another car, V8, six-speed manual. But little did we realise, because we've never built an EH before, they're a very small car, so to make things fit into this car is not as easy as it sounds. An LS, not a problem, but an LS with an air conditioner, which means we had to drop the motor from its standard position, we had to drop it 40 mil and go backwards 40 mil for everything to clear. So this is why fitting a, an LS into an EH is very, very hard. 
also this thing makes about 580 genuine horsepower so we needed to have a good exhaust on it so we've got a two inch primary exhaust so Dean's had to make it all fit down through the rails we're not a big fan of going through the inner guards and we didn't want to ruin those guards either so to make all that fit in there we've hidden all of the air conditioner lines which is very difficult because they drop down they go down under this panel up and through the underneath of the guard and if you ever get a chance to look under the guard you'll you'll see why it's so pretty under there but everything's hidden but it's still accessible we've got um, everything so we can just take a panel off under the guard and we can get to the, the lines if we need to take one out or do a repair or something like that um, as I said the EH is a very very small car so even the alternator we wanted to drop the alternator down near the chassis rails like on a on a a HK Holden but the rails are actually 150 mil narrower than an early Holden um, so that makes it really really hard to get things out of the way so we've, we've, we've gone with the billet specialties pulley system it's all at the top at the front but it works really well um, we were lucky with the Sean's custom alloy intake that we just need to run a single line uh, into the fuel system we don't need to run two so the plumbing on that side was very easy. We're running an Autronic ECU, um, which is a really good system for this car. It does everything we need it to do. It actually does more than we need it to do. But the car runs like a dream now. Um, the guys have tuned it on the dyno and it's a really sweet thing. Another problem was the six speed manual. Now these late model gearboxes are very tall. So, so the trans tunnel's got to come up. The problem with the trans tunnel coming up is the seats are in the road so to make it all fit in there is very very tight and then again the exhaust through there and we didn't want the exhaust to hang too far below the chassis rail we like to build our cars kind of low so everything had to fit under the uh, floor but not hang too far below the chassis so it's only the, the where the four into one collectors meet that it just hangs a little bit lower it's about a half an inch lower than the chassis rail uh, like I said all the brake lines and fuel uh, wiring and things like that they all run through the car we're allowed to legally do that here in Victoria so again they proved to be a little bit of an issue when the trimmer wanted to trim it because we've got so much wiring in this car and it all runs to the rear of the car because the battery's in the rear and then some of it has to come forward the brake lines have to come forward to the front brakes so we've flattened the floor out so that's given Mikey nowhere to put his panelling for the, the carpet so he's had to recess all the bottom of the the floor so as it sits on the top of it it would give us a spot to run all of our our lines and leads and stuff um, another couple of little things that we we come across um, parts for the EH they're not as easy to find as you would think um, there's some good repo stuff out there but you know side mouldings and front and rear windscreen mouldings that's really hard we're lucky we've got some guys that do brilliant chrome and brilliant stainless steel repairs so we use these guys and, and they've repaired everything to the best they can do. Um, there's, there's some little hidden things like the exterior door lock, so it all has central locking now. Um, there's some hidden wires, so if the central locking or the battery goes flat, you can pull a wire and it'll unlock the door. There's a jumper point underneath the car, so if you want to trickle feed the battery or jump start the car, you've got a jumper point underneath. So you don't have to pop the boot or anything like that to get to it. Um, and again, all this packaging takes time and, and you've got to think it out before you get to it. So there's a lot of little stuff on this car to, to explain. I've probably forgotten more than I remember. Um, so yeah, so this is the H for you guys. Um, hi, it's Greg from Maskell's Customs and Classics. Uh, here to show you the HK Monaro that we did a bit of a resto custom mod sort of job on. Um, this came to us as a, a bit of a car. It was, it was started but it was um, not good. We've had to do a lot of work. Uh, and in the process of fixing the car, typical HK Monaro, they just rusted and dented and they're in bad condition. So as we've gone on this car, we've just tidied a few little things up. It's nowhere near a customised car, but it's a very clean and tidy car. Uh, as you can see with the engine bay, we've just smoothed off the, the inner guards and a little bit on the firewall, hidden a wiper motor under the, the dash there, but most stuff's still on this car. This, is, this car is to be driven. 
got air condition, power steering. It's got all the all the gear, you know. But it's it's just really nice. Like it's clean. We haven't gone overboard on it. Uh, the owner and his boys want to be able to use the car and enjoy it, get it out on a Sunday cruise and and, and have a bit of fun. Um, so the basics of the car were was the owner originally wanted to start it with his dad. Um, his dad passed away. Uh, Terry's kind of in his mid sixties, so him and his boys, and they're in their thirties, uh, took out, like kept going on the project, um, and we've sort of done a very similar to what they wanted. We've we've asked them the colour that they wanted, and Terry had a 2015 Grange, I think, and it's the colour of that car. The stripes are the colour of the wheels off that car. Um, so if you look at the stripes, they're kind of dark and then light and they change in, in the different sunlight and different lighting. But it's essentially your HK Monaro. Everything on the car is HK Monaro in aspect of we haven't chopped up things. It's a, got a very original interior. Uh, we've hidden the aircon in the original heater area. Um, the, the front end is still HK holding. We haven't tightened any gaps up. The only gap work we've done is on the actual panels. Uh, we haven't really smoothed anything out as such, but we've just cleaned it up and tidied it and got rid of any sealers and goopy bits that don't look so good. Uh, used a lot of little blingy bits, you know, like the silver bonnet pull and the, the nuts and bolts and things like that. And they tidied this car right up. Um, Terry wanted the nice wheels to come to us with the wheels already. And we've lowered the car down a little bit so as it sort of sits really good and makes the, the wide tyres look wider. Um, it's got a castle main front end in it, uh, which works really well in these cars. Uh, turbo or 350 Chev with a turbo 350 gearbox, a very simple system. Um, nine inch rear end, disc brakes all round. Again, we've hidden the boosters in the rear and a few things like that. But essentially, there's not a lot of modifications on this car. It's just a very, very well done uh, restoration as such. Um, probably a very high end. Uh, the underneath is just black with a bit of stone guard in spots so it gets a bit of protection. We've used the car builder's sound deadener inside the two cars, the H and, and this car. That works really well because when you're driving down the road you get that, um, it's a bit more modern, it's, it, you're not hearing the road noise or the stones um, and you can talk to your, your partner that you're travelling with rather than yelling at each other. Um, so yeah, so essentially this car is it's, it's built to be used.